And now to the topic we have at hand. This makes us want to talk about law enforcement and treatment of suspects in Nigeria. Because we have to admit that when it comes to issues with police stations, in fact, it is a known prayer in Nigeria that may we not have issues with police. Because once you get there, <laughs> Whether you be guilty or not, the chances that you would leave that place without cars is quite slim. So this is what we'll be talking about today now. So first, let us talk about how police in Nigeria generally undo suspects. Because we've had cases of people in court after they are released. They will say that they were forced. Because this happened, I think, about two weeks ago. There was one man that has spent several years in prison. And... He was just arrested along the way. When he got to the police station, he kept telling them that he's just a taxi driver and he had he knew nothing about the robbery that took place around the area. There was nothing incriminating him in his car. But yet this man was brutalized. He was forced to confess to what he didn't do and then he spent several years in prison. What is it with police and handling of suspects in Nigeria? Well, I think it's something that uh, they have to work on because uh, police and policing and police and uh, enforcement, law enforcement in Nigeria is not actually at the level that we expect it to be. And so there's no trust between the citizens and the police. And you know that everywhere where there's no trust, then of course. So what happened? That's what happened. There's a breakdown of trust. There's no trust because like you said several times, you don't want to go to, nobody wants to give them any information, nobody wants to have anything to do with them because you go there, they try to incriminate you, and you know, just so they are not thorough with their investigation. So, and the investigation, most of them they are not done professionally. And so, people know that mere invitation to the police station, people just think, Oh, you are not going to come back, no matter how innocent you are. So and nobody wants to trust them with the information. Really, the people of because even when you trust them with information, you are not sure mm -hmm. that they will not bring you in one way, one way or the other. And that's not what we are seeing in developed society. So we, we, we wish they can work on that and uh, you know create that relationship, that trust. They have to do that, build on that trust, so that people can trust them that their information are going to be thorough, going to be professional, and you know. So Okay, all right. Uh, now we have Kabir Akigbulu, who is joining us from Ikes Estate, a legal practitioner. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us today on Firecrackers. All right, uh, Boris Akigbulu, can you hear me? Okay, all right. If you can hear me, we would like to have your contributions on this matter, especially regarding law enforcement and the treatment of suspects in Nigeria. Oops, it seems like the network is not so favorable at this time, so we will definitely be calling on him as we move on with the topic at hand. Okay, all right, now to the issue of uh, Joe Ajayu, the LNOC president. The accusation levied against him allegedly, well, because it is not yet, it is not yet accepted. These are grave things, and it's something like, because one, the ones we heard from um, reactions from Nigerians, they did say that this is a sensitive issue. But we also have reactions from NLC saying that they, that was on, on Tuesday this week, because the invitation came on Monday and on Tuesday, they were threatening to down to, they were threatening strike yes. if the NLC president was arrested. So, yes. So now, looking at this situation, what should have been the right thing to do? Well, I think, uh, number one, uh, he was just invited. I know that, give it to the Nigerian police, they, they would not have invited him if they don't have enough intelligence. Okay? So, but what I expect um, him to do, because he was invited, he was not uh, arrested, he was written a letter of invitation to say, Please, we have this information, we have this intelligence, we have this allegation. We want you to come and be interviewed on the 20th of August. And I think I reached out to his lawyer, Femi Fallon, and uh, they have 
got in, written back to the police to say, oh, because of uh, other engagements before your invitation letter, we will not be able to honor your invitation on the 29th of August. So I, I think the police have to do their job. Nobody's above the law. <laughs> it's also this environment that we think, oh, and because of this relationship, these challenges that you have, remember this is not the first time you have that issue with police, even in Imo State, you know, and all of that, and all of that, an allegation of being politically motivated, yes. you know, with Labour Party, you know, as the, the NSC president, uh, Labour Party is owned by the NSC, and at the point in time, they thought, you know, so there has been these brushes with the law, brushes with government, you know, the government is run by the APC, uh, being, he being a Labour president, believing to have a stake in Labour Party, so all of that, maybe those are the things that people are reacting to, okay, this is, this is politically motivated. I've had that too. This invitation politically motivated. These allegations are politically motivated. But he's holding a very sensitive position. And I think the police uh, want to take that into record to say, but they would, I don't see the police will have credible intelligence about this. And they will now fold their hands and say, oh, we can't touch him because he's the president of the NSC. So that's why they are asking to come for an interview. And I think as a responsible citizen in Nigeria, nobody is above the law. But I think the police will not just go and treat him because they know the kind of sense position that is holding right now as the number one labor leader okay. in the country. Well, while he was still holding that title of the number one labor leader, he was still assaulted in Imo State. Yes, that was during the time of the of the election there when they wanted to hold the protest why the election was closed just around the corner. So do you think that that might even since it didn't work the first time, what are the chances that that would even work this time? Yes, now? that's what I think as, uh, this is a personal opinion of mine, that you know it's from Imo State. Yes. And you are there's and you know the governor of, the, of Imo State and the Labour candidate in Labour State during those elections, you will have stayed away. You know, because I remember you brought me to this studio and we talked about it, and I said, because of that pose that's holding, he has to be neutral. He has to be seen to be neutral. So, and so for him going to Imbusi at that time was wrongly advised, okay? Because you know that whatever you do there at that time may be uh, misinterpreted. And because you are from that state, and you know the uh, the election is forthcoming and that's the time of electoral and you know so you will not just stay in your office in Abuja for now because this uh, time you have to be neutral you cannot even be uh, conversing for the Labour Party okay because that position puts you at a very sensitive position and knowing the way Nigerian uh, politics have everything is being politicized so you should have stayed above board to not to even give it a chance at all Okay, but right now, you won't say because if police have credible intelligence about what has happened, and, and maybe through his phone call, through, you know, you know, police have the way of carrying out that uh, information, intelligence. So if they have credible evidence, documentary, and they have analyzed it, I'm sure they will have done that before they invite him, write him a letter. I don't think they will want to just write him a letter of invitation just because they want to know. So, and he has opportunity to go there, go there with his lawyer to defend himself and maybe pro produce counter, you know, documentary evidence to say, no, I'm not involved. So, until we get to that, but I don't think it's also right for the labor, and I know going to start threatening the whole country just because the leader, labor leader, number one labor leader, has been invited. I don't think it's right. Okay, definitely, because when we are talking about like police, People now are trying to say that no one is above the law, yes. that if they are invited, that they should go there. Because we've seen EFCC done this numerous times. Uh, some people that people even think that should be, well, no one is above the law, really. But Except you those know, who, are, who, are, who are in offices and they have immunity, like yes. the president, the vice president, yes. the governor and the deputy governor, they have immunity during the time of their, you know, tenure, yeah, tenure in office. Tenure in office. So you can't, they can't be arrested, they can't be prosecuted until after the end of their term because that's what our constitution says every other person can be invited we have seen the chief justice yes. that was invited and that was taken out because of so we are talking of the labor leader so 
why would you not surrender yourself to be interviewed and clear yourself? It's an opportunity for you to clear yourself with documentary evidence, whatever, the police will be able to lay on the table. This is what we have against you. Okay, all right, but we cannot also excuse this uh, this factor of fear because since that even some Nigerians are guessing or they are concluding that there might be some political undertone to it, and the government is very powerful. We all have to accept that, that the government is powerful. Some people would say they can do and undo. So perhaps this well, he has already said that he's still going to go there. Yes, he's still going there at it. Yes, at a later date. Yes. But what lessons do you think Nigerians could pick from this and also the police too? Because one of the things that people are afraid of is the way they know the way Nigerian police usually treat suspect, even though they would say that they don't treat suspect this way. But for people who have been victims who are gone through, some have even sadly lost their lives. So what lessons do you think that even the police themselves could derive of what is taking place right now? And you know the challenge we have is security that one of our number one problems in Nigeria today is insecurity. So and the police are walking around and I don't think they will uh, not say they will now not do their job just because someone is holding such a sensitive neighbor you know leadership. Uh, and they are working hard because when there's law and uh, breakdown of law and other terrorism, kidnapping, we all blame the police of not doing their job. And now when they want to do their job, want to want to you know prevent uh, occurrence of uh, because it's ask, they're asking him to come and defend himself against terrorism financing. You know, for financing Sin terrorism. You know, they will have the police won't just make that allegation if they don't have evidence, they have documentary evidence, maybe some back bank accounts have been, you know, traced and all of that and all of that, and they've seen some traces in it. So is is an anti-terrorism, you know, and all of that. that we know, I know the problem we have, especially in the southeast, where it comes from. I'm sorry to say that, especially in Imo State, how many people have, how many officers, police officers, we have lost. And even military in, men. In, yeah, military men in course of duty. So these are not things that the police will treat with blue, with blue. So they will have their credit. I'm not saying, but he has an opportunity to go there and defend himself. But he cannot say he does have an immunity against arrest, against detention, against prosecution as a labor leader. Okay, but he has an opportunity to go there, go with his lawyer, go with his whoever is going there, and go and prove himself. And he has, if he knows that his conscience is and is not involved, and he have evidence to prove it, I'm sure with a formidable lawyer. It's not looking like Femi Falam. You'll be able to get enough uh, people to defend it. Okay, all right, definitely. So once again, the Nigeria Labour Congress president, that is Joe Ajeru, he was called for investigation over allegation of terrorism financing, treasonable felony, cybercrime, and other related offences. So